Today, we're going to be talking about and reviewing a new proposal that's taking place in the Linux kernel on how to use AI when developing the Linux kernel, more specifically, the ways we should disclose and implement AI to help write code. We'd be naive to think that there's no AI code assistance being used like GitHub Copilot to at least check things over or suggest lines of code for maintainers at this point. We've been living with AI for a few years now and a ton of people are using it. But how do you track when it's being used and make it known that AI is in fact helping contribute code in some fashion? Well, those rules and thoughts haven't really played out in the kernel yet. But this latest documentation and proposal has at least started that conversation. We're gonna be reading through this and trying to understand some of these proposed rules. And this all comes from Sasha Levin, who is an NVIDIA developer and is proposing this new set of rules and documentation. We're talking about AI coding assistants like Claude and GitHub Copilot when using them and contributing to the Linux kernel, and mainly two things proposed here, config files and guidelines on how to use them. So let's start the read here. As the aim here is to bring transparency and consistency across AI generated code contributions. So this is all a request for comments in the Linux kernel mailing list, proposing a standardization for configuration files and contribution rules. This patch series adds unified configuration and documentation for AI coding assistance, working with the Linux kernel code base. As AI tools become increasingly common in software development, it is important to establish clear guidelines for their use in kernel development. This series consists of two patches. Number one, the first patch adds unified configuration files for various AI coding assistants, including Claude, GitHub Copilot, Cursor, Codium, Continue, Windsurf, and Aider. These are all symbolically linked to central documentation file to ensure consistency across tools. Number two, the second patch adds the actual rules and documentation that guide AI assistance on Linux kernel development practices, including following kernel coding standards, respecting the development process, properly attributing AI generated contributions and understanding licensing requirements. The examples below demonstrate how the guidelines work in practice showing proper AI attribution in commits and assistance understanding of kernel documentation requirements. All AI assistants are required to identify themselves in commits using code developed by tags, ensuring full transparency about AI involvement in code development. And then we get some examples. And this conversation is important to bring up as it discusses on some of the fundamental changes to how open source software like Linux as it continues to get developed in the AI era. As we're gonna see issues like transparency and trust in open source, as we're gonna need more auditing and accountability and understanding how code was authored, preventing unintentional copyright and licensing violations. Also, we need to define the role of AI in large open source projects like this. What are these AI tools allowed to actually do? Are there any guardrails we need in order to make sure we don't diverge too far from the code base with AI? And who's actually liable for the AI generated code when it breaks or introduces security flaws? We need to be able to track these things. So with some of those mentions, of course, this is all working towards future proofing the kernel workflow. We need a precedent here. So let's look at some of these examples. Hello world test, Claude P, do you need to attribute your commits? Yes, according to Claude.md file in this Linux kernel repository, I must identify myself as an AI assistant in commits by including this signed off code developed by tag. I should not add to sign off by tag, only you, the human developer should add that as represents a legal certification. So this here is just showing how testing Claude code with the Claude markdown file tells it specifically to add these new tags in and which ones it's responsible versus which ones it's not. AKA it needs to say it's a code developed by in the AI current version, current date, and then expects the person using the AI to have a signed off by tag. So here's an example patch creation with Claude code. Claude P fix the don't to don't typo in this documentation, commit the result, done the typo has been fixed and committed. And the resulting patch with no manual edits here looks like this. From Sasha Levin on Friday, the 25th of July, 2025, there's a patch for documentation on Power Op fixing a typo. Fix a typo in the OPP documentation where don't was missing an apostrophe. Code developed by Claude. Claude Optimus 4, 2025-05-14. And it shows the rest of the commit and what has changed. AK, you see right here this line, don't operate on the pointer to don't operate on the pointer with an apostrophe. 
fantastic. So we can see that Sasha adds in the first of many patches here, create a single source of truth for AI instructions and documentation with symbolic links for all major AI coding assistants. The ones we're focusing on right now are Claude Code, GitHub Copilot, Cursor, Codium, Continue, Windsurf, and Aider. So how does this work? Well, these rules are all based on the various different types of AI. They all need different types of rules, whether that's in a markdown file or some other instruction set. You can see here that this is a .yml for Aider. These are all different types of protocols or at least expectations for metadata, depending on which bot you're using. So clearly here, GitHub Copilot is looking for a hidden folder in GitHub called Copilot Instructions.md to tell it exactly what it needs to do when authoring or working with a code set. So there's no common standard yet, which makes it a little harder to patch something like this where you wanna give rules to these individual bots that people use, and there's many of them. As they're all developed independently and have their own configuration conventions, it would be nice to be able to centralize and standardize this mess in order to pay for a clear way for AI integration on open source projects. As you can tell, it's gonna be hard to kind of manage this, but this is the way Sasha is approaching this, defining the rules in these various different files. So with those files added, we can see exactly what they're doing here. Well, they're just mainly adding the files in. I don't see much being displayed, but in the main dot markdown file, Linux kernel development AI instructions, this is the Linux kernel repository. When working with this code base, you must follow the following rules and then we set it to do. We're gonna look into some of these rules, but this is the beginning, as you can tell, for defining the rules for these AI bots. And if you like, if you, and if you like following along with Linux kernel development, then take a moment and subscribe below. You wouldn't wanna miss another video like this. YouTube can get finicky and also smash that like button on the way back up for more people to see this. Let's continue on to talking about more of the proposed AI instructions. So of course there's back and forth right now with many kernel developers starting to weigh in on all of this as we get a reply from Steve. So AI tools know to read these and the answer is yes there. As Sasha says, yep, these are magic files agents try to read and add to their context as they start up. John here says, so I'm going to ignore for now the, sub the substantive issues here to ask, do we really need to introduce markdown into documentation? Are these things really usable and understand RST? Why not add a file that can be a part of the documentation build so people can see instructions that are being provided? Thanks, John. Sasha says, from my understanding, most of the agents out there expect a markdown file, Claude MD, so on and so forth. All the documentation examples I can find online insist markdown. I suspect they will also understand RST, but then we'll be doing something unsupported. Though in this scenario, may even just plain text will be enough which all leads into the second patch where more rules were added for the existing documentation, which requires AI to identify itself in a commit message. So this is what things look like now. The heading was changed and essential documentation references were made. The core development process says to start here, the, the comprehensive guide on how to become a Linux kernel developer. Then we have detailed information on how the kernel development process works. Essential guide for getting your code into the kernel, checklist to review before submitting code, so on so forth as we talk about things like what not to do, patch submission process, legal and licensing, specialized topics, maintainer guidelines, key principles, AI attribution requirement, examples of it, sign off restrictions, and more. As this request for comments marks the first formal attempt to try to define AI generated code rules for the Linux kernel. I definitely understand why we need a formal AI policy in the Linux kernel. I do wanna know below in the comment section whether or not you think this is a good start, but we're gonna see more and more AI generated contributions as AI becomes even more capable. But we need to make sure we keep the integrity, legality, and the human oversight of Linux preserved. And this is a step in the right direction, at least having a conversation about it. I don't know that this specific documentation is going to be correct or the way that we approach how we use AI in the kernel with these specific rules is correct, but we'll see how people go back and forth on the mailing list. So we're not super far into it. We're going to keep going. But one thing I haven't seen quite yet is Linus's take on all of this. So you wouldn't want to miss that. I'm going to keep following through with all of this, but let's continue on with people's take on the initial set of rules and documentation. Case here starts going through and talking about the documentation patch. I'd still like to 
add rules based on our existing documentation. I'd still like to see this not in documentation, but I obviously defer to John. For some of the sections here, including AI instructions, essential documentation reference, so on and so forth, instead of hard-coded paths, I would recommend just discussing the topic areas it is expected to find and ingest, e.g. redo the key principles list. You have later to be more specific about topic areas and adjust the prompting to induce the requirement to find and read each topic. As far as coding rules and standards, and the reason I want to avoid such specifics is that even as an example above, this ends up being hyper-specific. Why? Summarize the deprecated RST. Just say, find and read those notes in the deprecated APIs and language features. More on patch submission and legal and licensing. The only stuff I can think should be in this is the kind of area is a commentary about how agent differs from a human. You are not a legal entity. You cannot sign off on the DCO, which you get into below. Everything except number six is already expected of human devs, so I think just the last item is really all we need here. And if we're going to go with code developed by here, then I think we need to explicitly say, do not include an email. And we must update the checkpath.pl to not yell about missing SOB when it finds CDB. So SOB just stands for signed off by, and CDB now stands for code developed by, at least as proposed here. Finally, a few more things from Case here. Hello, Whitespace, my old friend. Unless explicitly told otherwise, agents must never have trailing Whitespace on any line and all files must have a final new line character. Also, can we please not use the term AI? I think agent is better generic term as it could include other things. Signed off Case. And then another great thing brought up. What's the difference between that and others using their corporate email? I even add Google to my SOB to denote who is paying me to do the work. Also, I would argue that it would be useful in a change log as there's a bug in generated code. You know who or what to blame, especially if the pattern is to be found. So really, this one is attacking the fact the rules initially are saying that corporate sponsorship should not be shown in the commit process as it might be free advertising. Well, at least you know who to blame is the point being made here by Steve, especially if you find a pattern and how they're using the AI and what things that they're doing wrong. It'd be nice to know, you know, what company they're coming from or who actually is committing that code. So that makes sense. And a lot of back and forth keeps taking place here. This is so awesome to see as we obviously need to talk about this stuff. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience today, make sure to check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and my map all at SavvyNick.com. Download them today as we're gonna continue talking about these AI agents and coding helpers because they're rapidly evolving and changing how human code is written. The implications at this moment are too big to ignore, especially in critical open source projects like the Linux kernel. It'd be silly not to start talking about this stuff. And honestly, it's kind of surprising that we've gone so long without this type of a conversation. Now there have been hints, but there haven't been many people who have actually created or started to create some rules. And it's very nice to see this conversation going on as we're starting to see some obvious rules take place. I'd love to know what rules you think need to be considered in the comment section below. Make sure to post it down there. But as a lot of people start using tools like GitHub Copilot, Claude, Cursor, ChatGPT, so on and so forth to write things like functions, refactor code, or even generate patches, they're gonna continue using them. Whether or not you want them to, if we don't talk about this, we're pretending code is still being written in the old way from scratch by humans. The big problems here are who actually owns the code that AI generate? And what if it's copyrighted material on accident? Does it need to be removed? How do we tell what was actually generated by AI without it specifically telling us? If something breaks in the kernel and it introduces a security bug, who wrote it? A human? An AI assistant? Was it reviewed properly by a person? You know, these are all things we need to understand. As AI currently doesn't understand the kernel's strict rules, ones that are obvious, right, are going to be things like do not break user space. We know this is something very specific and taken to heart by Linus Torvalds himself, the founder and lead maintainer of the Linux kernel. This is one rule that should never get broken. We also need to make sure we avoid deprecated APIs. Also, we need to follow all subsystem maintainer processes. These are all things we need to follow as AI does offer a massive productivity boost because it can speed up things like boilerplate tasks or help onboard new contributors, even auto-suggest kernel patterns, which all helps us write code and focus on the things that really matter. But this is all going to 
make us rethink a lot of the open source norms, as we're finally talking about it in the Linux kernel, things like authorship, trust, and community. Who's going to get this credit? Can we trust what the machine is generating? And how does AI play a role in the community? It's going to be interesting to see what Linus has to say about all of this. He hasn't quite commented yet, but I'm sure he's thinking about what's all going on here, as this is obviously a big deal for the kernel and kernel development, as he mainly focuses on code quality. Code quality is important and review matters more than who or what actually writes it. We'll see if that still holds true because I'm going to continue following this thread and how everything develops, or at least how this discussion develops. We may or may not get anything out of this, but there's definitely a lot of people discussing it and talking about it. As our overall community sentiment is overall reasonable towards this first step to managing AI involvement in the Linux kernel. There's legitimate concerns about licensing model training on GPL code and how the attribution will shape perception. Of course, the conversation is far from settled here as it's just the beginning of the conversation. So you wouldn't want to miss the rest of this conversation. I want to know what you think about all these rules. What rules of your own would you add on top of this as we should start having a conversation in the comment section below. Also, if you made it to the end of the video, congratulations, you're a true fan. Don't forget to subscribe below, smash that like button on the way back up. We're going to look for Linus's insight here soon. So you wouldn't want to miss that video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.